Good afternoon to you all accounting buffins. Welcome to Learn Extra Live. We're doing accounting, guys. I know that you enjoy the subject and you've been waiting for this show. My name is Abram and yes, indeed, the A squared team is in the building. Ashraf, how are you doing, my friend? Good, and you, AB? I'm good. I'm feeling good. Ha. That's great. I think you're looking forward to the weekend. You think so? I think so. I'm going to get some tips from you because we had a, a discussion earlier on. Are you going to give some mindset as tips as well on what to do on this long weekend? They got to work, work, work. Remember grade 12s? For you, every weekend is a study weekend to prepare because very soon your June examination is upon you and you need to be prepared for that June examination. I think to be quite honest, my uh, matriculants do not have any weekend. Absolutely. For now, guys, the focus is on preparation, working towards that final exam because you know grade 12s, by the time you realize it, the big day is on you and by that time you need to be prepared. All these are stepping stones to preparing for that big day. Of course. And how are we helping them today? What are we Well, doing? guys, today our topic is inventory systems. Right. Now, what you need to concentrate on is the following because when it comes to inventory systems you find that when when we're talking about inventory systems let's clearly understand what we are talking about one when we refer to two stock systems we are referring to work that you have done right up to now in grade 12 remember in, in grade 11 you did a section called periodic system right and in grade 10 and in grade 11 you were faced with a perpetual system do not confuse yourself when we're talking stock systems we are talking the system that the business is using namely are they using the periodic system or are they using the perpetual system obviously we're going to go into a bit of explanation on these two systems because inventory is based on these two systems. One, what is important is you will need to know both of these systems as they can appear in, que in standalone questions or they could appear in your financial statements question. So please be aware of what type of so stock system the business is using. Right, then... If you look at the perpetual system, it's something that you've been doing since grade 10, where you record the cost of sales after every sale. One of the key components or key characteristics of the perpetual system is that you keep a running record of stock. Now, if you look at the periodic system, you find that you only work out the cost of sales at the end of every period. That is why it is called the periodic system. Obviously, you use a formula or you use whatever information that you have available in order to calculate your gross profit. So in other words, a key characteristic of the periodic system is that you only calculate your cost of sales at the end of your financial year. Very important. Now, obviously, if you're looking at these two stock systems, definitely they have the advantages. Let's look at these. One, the perpetual stock system, you will, know, you will know exactly how much stock you should have on hand. Why is that so? Because you're keeping a running record of your stock. Every time your stock is being sold, you are putting through a double entry whereby you are debiting your cost of sales and crediting your trading stock account. In other words, there's a continuous, a perpetual, th that's where the name comes from, perpetual continuous recording of your stock. Right. Thus, it becomes easier for you to identify and to detect if there are any stock shortages within your system because you have recorded all the stock coming into your business. At the same time, you've recorded stock that has left your business via, via your trading account. Therefore, you can see in your trading stock account, right? And the correct terminology is your trading stock account. In your trading stock account, you've shown stock coming in and stock going out. Therefore, 
At any one time, if you need to know how much stock you have on hand, all that you do, open up your trading stock account and it will then give you the balance that should be on hand. If that does not compare or it, it, it disagrees with your, with your stock take, this means definitely you can detect a stock shortage. There has been some way along the line, stock has gone awry somewhere. Okay, another important feature of it, it is more accurate and realistic. Why? Because your cost of sales are recorded every single day. In other words, every time there's a, there's a transaction involving sales, you are recording the transaction for the cost of sales as well. So think about that. Perpetual sales and cost of sales, they always go together. Right. Okay, now, if you look at the periodic stock system, what can you tell yourself about the periodic so stock system? What I, what, what's the advantage? Obviously, it is much cheaper and easier to implement than a perpetual system. Why? You don't need complicated equipment to be able to run this stock system. In the previous system, one of the disadvantage would be it's expensive. Why? You need an endpoint tool which is linked to your computers, which is a barcode, uh, bar a scanner to check your barcodes. Because remember, every time the cashier records a sale, it's recording your cost of sale as well. Whereas, think of this here, your small spaza shop. They don't have fancy equipment, so does that mean they do not record their stock? Certainly not. Their stock system that they implement is what we call the periodic stock system. You don't need scanners and you don't need to record your cost of sales after every sale. I hope that is crystal clear. What are we discussing? We are discussing the two stock systems. Keep that in mind. Okay, now, to further illustrate to you the difference between a periodic inventory system and a perpetual inventory system, what I have done for you is I've prepared two ledger accounts. And yes, and yes, grade 12s, you are expected to know this for examination purposes, right? Because you will find in certain instances, you are asked to do certain calculations. Watch, when it comes to the trading account using the periodic inventory system, you start off with your opening stock, you add your purchases for the year, you add your carriage on purchases, you add your customs duties, right? All those expenses that you have incurred on your purchases are recorded in the trading account on the debit side. Watch, on the credit side, you've got your closing stock and your sales figure. Now, look at this calculation because it's, it's very, very important. Watch. It's your closing stock plus your sales, these two added together, minus your opening stock. All of these are then added as one component. Can you see that? Obviously, it ends there. And this then gives you the calculation of your gross profit. In other words, what am I saying? I'm saying opens opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases plus customs duties, or any other expenses that you have incurred in bringing your goods to the point of sale would be part of this calculation. Just a warning. Be careful. Be careful of the term carriage on sales. That, grade 12s, is a red herring. It's there to catch you. It has nothing to do with the calculation of your gross profit. It's a normal operating expense which would go to your profit and loss account. I repeat, be careful of carriage on sales. It's there to test whether you know you can identify that it's not part of this calculation. So, once again, opening stock plus purchases plus carriage on purchases, customs duties, add them all together, right? Minus your final stock will then give you your cost of sales and then your sales, less your cost of sales, will then give you your gross 
profit. So you can see that when you are using the periodic inventory system, this is what you are expected to know, right? Then, when it comes to the perpetual inventory system, simple guys, you keep a running record of cost of sales. Therefore, the two accounts that you have would be your sales account and your cost of sales account, which are transferred into your trading account, and the difference between sales and cost of sales obviously gives you your gross profit for the year. So, what is clearly evident, what is important for examination purposes, is for you to be able to identify, is the business using the periodic inventory system, or is the business using the perpetual inventory system? Obviously, the question will indicate to you, and based on that, you would now be able to see exactly which method do you have to use in answering the questions. Okay. So, this then shows you the different stock systems. Right? Got that clear? The different stock systems. Now, we come to something totally different. And this is called stock validation or stock valuation stock validation or stock valuation now before we go into that why do we need to know this remember the valuing of stock is very important as it influences the financial statements obviously Right? It has an impact on your financial statements. And also, because your investment in stock normally constitutes a large percentage of your total assets. So stock being an important asset in our business, we need to know how that stock is going to be valued. Okay? So this means that we have to look at the different methods of determining stock value. Obviously, the method that you want to use has to be the method that will be the most realistic and it should be the method that gives you the most correct figure that you are looking for. Allow me to explain. Obviously, your stock figure is going to have an impact on your gross profit. Right? Obviously, that, 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 that is self-evident. Yeah. Here's the explanation on that one. When we're talking about the closing stock figure, can you see this one here? It impacts directly on the calculation of your gross profit. Therefore, the stock valuation that you're going to be using is going to impact on your financial statement. Therefore, we're saying it's going to have a direct impact on the profits of any specific business. And that is why it's important that you are able to value your stock correctly. Now, what methods are we going to use? The, we talk here about the four methods of stock, uh, stock validations that we could use for you, for examination purposes, you are only expected to know three. And the three that you are expected to know is specific identification method. Sounds very fancy. I'll tell you more about it just now. Number two, what we call the weighted average method. Okay? Something new in grade 12. Something new. You've never heard of this before. First time you're hearing, uh, hearing about it in, stock, in terms of stock validation, definitely the weighted average method. And then the next one is what we refer to as the FIFO method of stock valuation. FIFO from the acronym first in, first out. Okay, now, in terms of your curriculum requirements, in addition to FIFO, and weighted average, in terms of your CAPS document, you are also expected to know about the specific 
identification method. Now, grade twelves, this is nothing new. It's old hat. You've seen it before. What is the shift talking about? Very simple. If I tell you that this article of stock is valued at 15 rand, I've identified the item, specific identification method. I've given you the value of the item. For example, if you walk into a motor dealer and you see an Audi A8 parked there, and they give you the value of it, the cost price of it, then you are aware that that is the value attached to that vehicle. It is specific identification method. So in this way, what am I saying? I'm saying that specific identification is nothing new. It's something that you've been afraid with since the time you started with stock in grade 10. But I'm sure you want to know more, so the place to be is mindset learn. Of course, let me identify this item for you guys. Here is our workbook, and it's at uh, a price of 139 Rand. If you want it, simply send an email to sales at mindset.za. For this show, we've got notes for you guys. They're posted on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash land extra. Do follow me on Twitter at land extra, and also visit our website, which is land.mindset.za. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Now you've just seen yourself this awesome competition, and you're wondering, how do you enter? It's simple. If you are doing matric this year and intending to study next day at any uh, teacher institution or university, you must apply for this competition to win yourself one year of free accommodation at any South Point accommodation next to any uh, university that you would choose. So guys, for more information, make sure that you fill in the entry form that we have for you on our website. The link will be posted on facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Uh, now, Ashraf, tomorrow is Workers' Day, and I think, um, I know that teachers don't normally relax, but tomorrow, I think you should just relax. Are you giving me offer tomorrow? Yes. Are you telling me tomorrow I must just chill and take it easy? Yes, just take it easy. Okay, AB, we'll do just that. And these learners are going to be working on your behalf. That's perfect. If All they right. just do the work for tomorrow, I'll just chill and have a good Friday and relax, and I'll see them on Monday back in the classroom. Good, <laughs> good. See we have a deal. Right. <laughs> we got no questions? Um, no questions so far. Um, just a comment from um, Mbalente saying, Ashraf is the most amazing accounting teacher ever. I enjoy his lessons. Thank you, Mbalente. Thank you very much. I enjoy much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, let's move on. Now, when we look at weighted average, what are we looking at? What is it that we want to calculate? Now, let me give you a simple example. Let's take a box or a basket of golf balls, right? You bought in January, you bought in February, you bought in March, you bought in April, and you bought throughout the year. Now, come into the year, A.B., yes. and you've got this basket of golf balls, and you want to determine what's the value of this particular golf ball. Obviously, guys, understand the nature of the good, the nature of the stock, tells you it is not possible for you to exactly identify which golf ball was bought when. So now, what do we do? We use what is called the weighted average. Watch. The weighted average method does not take quantities into account, but the average price into account. That means every time you buy goods, when there's a receipt of goods, your average changes. Or you do one average at the end of the year where you total up all the quantities that you have bought, including the prices at which you've paid for those golf balls, and you work out what is called a weighted average. Clear? So the nature of the good, the type of stock that you are dealing with, will indicate to you that this is the method of stock, most the most appropriate valuation of stock to determine what is the value of stock that is left over at the end of the financial year. Let's just take it a step further. If I have six beamers parked here in front, and I tell you 
use the weighted average price to determine the stock value. You'll tell me, Ashraf, I think you've lost your marbles because a seven series, a five series, a three series are distinct types of stock. They are distinct articles. You can distinguish one from the other by the same token. Think about the golf balls. You can't d differentiate between the golf balls. They're all the same. This gives you an indication that the, the stock item that you are dealing with will indicate to you what method of stock valuation to use for that particular item. I hope that is crystal clear. Okay, Abraham? Yes. Prastani? It's clear. Good. <laughs> okay. Now, we come to the next one, which is called FIFO, standing for the acronym for first in, first out. Now, obviously, think about this. If you're thinking about a business that sells milk, for example, the milk that is bought first is sold first. You're not going to walk into a shop and say you want milk from three months ago. Then you're not getting milk, you're getting sour milk. Isn't it? Mm. So obviously, depending on the nature of the enterprise, you have to determine the value of stock using the method which is called first in, first out. And here, yeah, guys, you know, grade 12s, and uh, especially grade 12B, whichever grade 12B you may be <laughs> in in the country, right? Because you guys are the, when I say 12B, I'm saying it with respect. Why, Abram? Those are your great 12 boffins in accounting. Okay. Okay? All right. So, guys, 12B, you are the 12 boffins out there, accounting boffins. Now, watch. Watch this, what this means here. We're saying that the goods that are bought first are the ones that are issued for sale first. And the secret, guys, means bottom up. Listen carefully. I'm not saying bottoms up, <laughs> A.B. I'm saying bottom up. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the calculation. When you're going to do a calculation using the FIFO method, you work from the bottom up. And you'll see just now, when I apply that principle, what I'm, what I'm in fact referring to. Okay, so what have we discussed? Let's summarize. We've, st we've spoken about stock systems, okay? We've spoken about perpetual and periodic. We then went on to stock validation. We, st we spoke about specific identification. We've spoken about weighted average. And we've spoken about FIFO. There's another one called LIFO, last in, first out. But like I said, it's not for your, it's not in the ambit of the curriculum. You don't have to worry about it. Got it, guys? Okay, now. All right, Ashraf. Yes, Amy. Why, why there on your, on your bottom up, it's a secret one, secret bottom up? The secret bottom up? Mm. Because what I want learners to see is that when they're using this method, they must use, it's a secret which now it's open to them that when they're doing this calculation, they must work from the bottom up. It makes their calculation much, much easier. Right, so they've got, you know, I keep on giving them secrets. I yeah. keep, giving them, keep on giving them shortcuts and this and that. So this is just another secret that I'm letting them into, which I want them to apply in the exams. Okay, guys, you're going to do that? Great stuff. Okay, let's look at our question. It says, Yankees Electronics sells LCD flat screen television sets. The business is owned by Jane Yankees. As she has other businesses to run, she cannot be at the shop very often. She employs Milan Miller to run the shop for her. The business uses AHA. AHA. You remember what I said? R T F Q. Read the full, full question. What are they telling us in the introduction? That the system business uses periodic inventory. Can you see? We've discussed this. So it's tying in directly with what we've discussed in the earlier segment of our program. Right, and 
and they use the FIFO method to value the stock. Can you see? Already, you are, you, 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 your mind is set. They're giving you an indication. This business uses periodic method. We've discussed that method. This business uses the FIFO me method of evaluation of stock. Stock system, periodic. Valuation, FIFO. Got it, great 12s? Brilliant. And what is required? We've got to calculate the value of closing stock of 145 television sets. We've got to calculate the cost of sales and the average markup achieved. We've got to work out or pr provide a calculation to prove whether the information given by the cleaner is true or not. Right? We are also told that Jane is concerned about the final stock figure. We've got to pre explain using information that we have why her why she's justified in her, in her in her worries or concerns and we got to work out another question here dependent on whether she did she, she took some action during the year whether it, it paid off whether it was good for her whether it was bad for her. look at the nature of the question you got to apply your knowledge to be able to answer these questions also we got to work out points or, or provide points to assist her in, prov in improving internal control within the business. Right, let's go into question one. There's the information that's provided for me. I'm asked to calculate the value of closing stock of 145 television sets on the 28th of February using the FIFO method. What was the secret for or FIFO? Bottom, bottom up. up. Right. Now, what are we referring to? Watch. There's my information provided. Here goes. Let's just get it right so we can see. What did we say? We are using the FIFO method to calculate the value of 145 units on hand. And I said the secret is bottom up. Watch. You start at the bottom and work yourself up to the point that you need to get to. Make sense? Bottom up. Right. We have 145 units left over. There goes. What do we know? If we are using the FIFO method of stock valuation, then immediately we know first in, first out. In other words, the stock that you had at the beginning of the year is sold and the stock that you have at the end of the year is what is left over so you start off with the 90 units that you had bought in December clearly those units were not sold why first in first out so what you bought at the end is what you have left over and that is why grade 12s we say bottom Start at the bottom of your table, you work with your 90 units, right? And the total of the 90 units was 411,750. So immediately you tell yourself, 411,750 is the 90 units. Just to make it clear to you, that's the 90 units that you have accounted for. Remember, you got to account for 145 units. This means that you've accounted for 90 units that were not sold, and clearly you can see why were they not sold first in, first out. So you're done with the 90, you move up, bottom up. You go to the next lot of units. It's 145 units that we had, correct? One, 145 so 145 minus the 90, which we've, uh, we've catered for already, meaning we must now work out on 55 units. Watch what we're saying. We are saying that of these 120 units here, right, you have 55 units left over. I'm making sense? I'm working from the bottom going up. I can clearly see now that of the 145 units that I have left over at the end of the year, 90 are already taken care of with this purchase in December. So we move up and we look at the 120 units. How many of those units are left over? Remember we calculated that to be 55 units. Now, 
Let's do a calculation. These 55 units, I cannot use the 585 in its entirety. Why? Because that is representing 120 units. I only need to calculate 55 of those units. Watch what I do. I say, fine, 55 units would be, right? What is the value of those 55 units? Let's go back to our question. And we say, fine, these units cost me 4,750 Rand each. However, that was only the unit price. There was also carriage of 15,000 Rand that was paid on a total of 120 units. Make sense? I need the total value of the unit plus the carriage of how many, t of how many units? of 55 units to give me a total of 145. Right, so what do I do? Firstly, let me work out the carriage per unit, okay? And that means you take the value of 15,000 divided by the number of units that we bought was 120, and this will give me a figure of 125 Rand. That's the carriage per TV set, per unit, right? If that's the carriage price per unit, 125, the unit price was 4750, so we say 4750, 475, why do I keep on pressing the one? 4750 plus 125 to give me a value of 4875 per TV set. Got that? That's one unit. What, I've, what have I done? I've taken the cost price of the item plus the carriage. Remember, we're using periodic system. You got to add all the expenses of your purchases to your unit price. Okay, 4875 times, what did we say, how many units? 55 to give me a value of 268125. Watch here, 268125. What is that? That's the value of the 55 units. Let's add. If I add this here, it gives me a total of 145 units. Is that what I'm working towards? 145 units? Certainly, because I'm told I have 145 units left over. Let's add this value here. Will be 268125 plus 411750. And my answer is 679875. Six seven nine eight seven five. There, I've worked out the value of my TV sets using which system? Periodic stock system. Which method of stock valuation? FIFO. The secret to FIFO, guys, is what? Bottom up. Start at the bottom of your table and do your calculation. Right, next question. The next question said, Calculate the following, your cost of sales, right? Now, in order to calculate your cost of sales, you've got to start off with, remember the calculation, opening stock. What was the value of my opening stock? 385,000. So therefore we say, opening stock, 385,000. Okay, what do I add to it? I've got to add my Total purchases. What's the value of the goods that I purchased during this financial period? Let's go and find that out. The total purchases value would be 1765500. So 1765500. Five What's that? Let's just put it here so we can identify. There's my opening stock. There's my purchases. Okay. So I've brought in two components. What have I brought in? I've brought in my opening stock to the value of 385,000. Where did I get my information from? From my given information, it says your stock balance is important, inclusive of transport cost. There's my value. That's why I did not have to add anything further to it. It was inclusive of my transport cost. Right, then I then added the total value of goods that I purchased. 
1,765,500. There goes 1,765,500. What was that? My total value of goods that I purchased. Okay, now, what other information do I have? Let's see. I'm told that during the year, something happened. Three television sets from August 2014 were damaged. The television sets were returned to the suppliers. Got it? And the suppliers reversed the carriage on these items as well. Are you with me? Now, if I'm doing this calculation, I go to August and I say, fine. What was the unit price? 4750. Do you recall? We also worked out the carriage to be 125. So therefore, we say 4750 plus 125 to give me a figure of 4875. Multiply that by 3, and that gives me a figure of 14,625. What is the 14,625? That's the value of the television sets that were returned. Keep that in mind. These were television sets that were damaged. They were returned. The supplier gave us a credit on the carriage as well. What was that figure? That figure was 14,625. I'm sure you want to know more. The place to be is with A.B. and Ashraf. Of course, but Ashraf, back you, in a jiffy. you didn't ask me today. I always wait for the opportunity to answer you when you ask... Um, the, <laughs> the, RTFQ. the RTFQ question. Okay, don't worry, next, uh, next segment I'll give it to you. Anyway, guys, if you're sitting there at home and you also have some questions, make sure that you throw them at me on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra or simply follow me on Twitter at Lenextra. See you after this break. Welcome back, guys. What are you waiting for? If you think you are a Bright Spark, enter the Be a Bright Spark competition and you could win yourself that cool nice and funky Chevy Spark L. All you need to do is to simply buy yourself one, the Safeways K53 manual, or download the cool Android app, which is available for only 59 Rand from Samsung Galaxy uh, App Store or the Google Play Store. So get entering right now. For more details, ask me. I'm here on Facebook. And I must say this, guys, for this lesson. If you're struggling or if you don't understand anything that Ashraf is going through, the notes are there for that. The notes that he's going over, it's what we have for you guys. Already they are posted. You can also get them, get them on, our, uh, on our website, which is today. So learning with us is very easy. How's it, Ashraf? We are extra special. That's why we called Learn Extra. Exactly. Okay, guys? Of course. Remember, we're busy with our calculation. Coming back here, we recalculated the value of the goods that we returned, and the return that we worked out was, let's find it, that was not the one, we worked it out to be, uh, let's just do that again, we said, on our information sheet, we worked out 4750, 4750, plus the 125, which was the carriage, to give me 4875, times the 3, to give me 14625, right, so that figure, guys, is 14. Six, two, five. Watch, we are returning those goods. So therefore, you are subtracting. Then you subtract your closing stock, which you calculated. Do you remember? We calculated our closing stock to be 679875. Therefore, 679875. Okay, so let's do our calculation now. And our calculation is 385,000 plus 1765,500, right? Minus 14,625, minus 679,875, and your answer is 1456,000. Here goes. 1,4. Five six thousand one million four hundred and fifty six thousand. What did we calculate here? Remember, the question said K53 
calculate your cost of sales. Right, in the same question, you are asked to work out the average markup percentage that was achieved. Now obviously, to calculate that, it's your sales minus your cost of sales. Let's see what information is provided. Do we have a sales figure? Certainly we have. 2303800. Oh, so immediately we say fine. 2303800 oh, minus my cost of sales. What was my cost of sales? I calculated it to be 1456000 $1, minus 1456000 to give me a value of 847800. 847800. Watch this. So eight, four, seven, eight hundred is my markup. Where did it come from? Sales minus cost of sales. These figures, the sales was given to you. Obviously, you calculated the cost of sales. So if that is your markup, they want your markup percentage that you've achieved. Markup over. What was your cost of sales? You calculated it. Remember, you calculated it. In the same question, one, four, five, six thousand over one, four, five, six thousand. What are we doing here, guys? That's your markup over your cost of sales times what? A hundred over one. Okay? If you do this, let's do the calculation. It's eight, four, seven, eight hundred times one hundred divided by one, four, five, six, one, two, three. To give me a figure of 58,22. 58,22%. Remember, what do you want? You want to calculate the percentage markup. This answer has to be in a percentage. The que that, is, that is what the question specified. Right, next question. There's my information. My question says... Provide a calculation to prove whether the information given by the cleaner is true or not. Let's look at what the cleaner told us. D, a possible theft of television sets. Jane has been informed by a cleaner, blowing the whistle, that he suspects that Marlon of giving away television sets to his family members and friends. Marlon isn't <laughs> very honest. Okay, he's suspecting. Mm. We can't prove until found guilty. Yes, of Let's course. do a calculation. Let's see if we can prove whether that statement is true or not. How are we going to do that? Let's start off by saying, how many television sets did we have at the beginning of the year? We had a total of 70 sets, right? So you start off by saying, we had 70 sets at the beginning of the year. Clear? Right? Then you ask yourself, how many did I purchase for the year? How many sets were purchased during the year? We purchased a total number of 360. Okay? So, plus the 360 would be the number of sets that we purchased during the year. Now, now, Something else happened that we must take cognizance of. What happened? Three television sets were returned. Obviously, we must remove those three from the equation. These three must be subtracted, right? And, and obviously, definitely, we sold some television sets. How many sets did we sell? We sold a total of 276 units. Do you see that? Watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing. I'm using my knowledge of the periodic inventory system. And what am I saying? I'm saying, there's my opening stock. There's my purchases. There's my return of stock. And I sold how many sets? 276. Let's just verify that figure. There goes. We sold a total of 276 units or 276 television sets. That was my sales 
Okay, now let's see what happens here. So we start off with the 70 units that we had plus the 360 that we purchased minus the three that were returned minus the 276 that we sold. How much are we supposed to be left with? 151. That's what we're supposed to be left with. Okay, let's do a comparison with what our final stock figure was. Remember, what are we told? 28th of February, number of units, 145. Aha, uh -huh. can you smell a rat? A.B., mm. can you smell a rat? Yeah. Watch, 145 units is the number of units that we have on hand. Clearly you can see, clearly you can see. What can you see? That six units have found their feet somewhere <laughs> along the business. They've walked out of the business without <laughs> informing us. Okay, clearly there's theft of stock. How did we prove it? By doing a calculation. Starting with what we had, taking into consideration what we returned, watch what we had, what we purchased, what we returned, what we sold, difference between the two tells us that these are the units that have been stolen. Got it, guys? Clear? Okie dokes. Next one. Jane is concerned that the final stock of 145 units is not appropriate for her business. Provide a calculation of figures to support her opinion and explain. Right, let's do this. How many units do we have left over? We have a total of 145 units, which becomes my closing stock, okay? Over the number of units that I have sold, 276, right? Let's multiply that by 12 to give me the number of months that I'm dealing with, right? Let's do this calculation, and we find that if we take 145 times 12 divided by 276 will give me a figure of plus minus 6,3. Now, what have I done here? I've done a calculation, and I didn't actually go into an explanation, which I'm going to do now. Watch. 145 is my closing stock of television sets, right? 276 is the number of television sets that I have sold this year. Again, from my given information. I multiply it by 12 over 1 to give me an indication of the number of months that I, I'm expecting that stock to last. Where am I alluding to? To my stock holding period. Watch, I've done something different with this particular calculation. I went into the calculation first because I want you to understand the calculation. Because very often, you just swat off a financial indicator and you don't really know what you are calculating. Three twelves, and appeal to you guys. Understand what you are doing because if you do that, you understand the work and you know how to apply it. What am I working out here? I'm working out my stock holding period. I'm asking myself, how long will the stock last me? That was her, her concern. What was the concern? That the final stock of 145 units is not appropriate for her business. And the answer is yes. It's not appropriate for her business. Why? The nature of the business, the advancements in technology tells you that this stock will last for at least six months. You know what happens in technology. Within six months, those, those TV sets may be outdated, A.B. Mm. And that is why the type of business that you are involved in should give you, you should be selling your stock faster.
That's what we say. Right. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. The next question says that Jane has adjusted the selling prices during the year to attract new customers. Comment on whether or not this strategy has benefited the business. Provide figures to support your answer. I'm begging you, if you want me to go on my knees, Avery, I'll do that as well. Mm. Great twelves, where a question says, provide figures to support your answer. The examiner is expecting you to take information that has been given to you and to use it to support your answer. Now, the question was, she adjusted the selling prices. Let's see, where did she adjust her selling prices? Let's look at it, let's study the information. Watch, we were selling at 9,100. We were selling at 9,800. Immediately we changed something. We started selling at 7,500. We were selling again, we started reselling at 9,800. Notice what happened. The moment you started selling in December at 7,500, immediately it had an impact on the quantity of units that you sold. Clearly evident for you there. What happened? When we reduced our price of 7,500, when? In December. It immediately resulted in what? In us selling more units. Can you see that? Watch. When, she went, when they reverted to the old price of 9,800, watch what happened. The moment you came to 9,000, immediately you dropped back to 16 units. So in other words, yes, one may argue that December being part of the festive season, people have more money to spend, and as a result of that, but look at the drastic increase in the sales. So these are the types of points that you have to bring out in your answer. Study the information given. Use the amount and say, when the sales price was 7,500, they sold 150 units. When the sales price was, when the selling price was increased to 9,800 again, the sales dropped to 16 units. Those are the types of answers examiners want to extract from you when you are answering your question paper. Right. Then the question says, how would you assist Jane in improving internal control in her business? Definitely, you need to talk here about division of duties. What do we mean by division of duties? Firstly, when we talk about internal control, internal control, what are we referring to? We are referring to the fact that internal control safeguards the assets of a business. Yes. Amongst them is division of duties. I know what you're going to tell me. <laughs> time up, Amy. Come on. <laughs> it's time up, Ashraf. I'm sorry. It's not me. Eh? Uh, but thank Mind you so much for the great lesson. Aim for the moon. Because if you don't get there, definitely you're going to be our shining star. Of course, guys, and have a, a very blessed and lovely long weekend, guys. Remember, this show was probably brought to you by the Department of Basic Education. We're so grateful for the love and the support they're giving us. To you guys, enjoy your weekend. We love you. Peace.